Hi, and welcome to A Window to Born. I'm your host, Mavis Robinson, and joining me today, I've got two people in the studio. We have Diane Flynn, who's the president of the Bourne Historical Society, and Donna Gerard, who is an awesome volunteer <laughs> and is involved with some of our new, uh, new initiatives. So thank you so much for being here, both of you. You're welcome. So it's still snowing out, <laughs> but we're well, forging on. We are. <laughs> and we're looking forward to spring, and spring means um, new events. It means Eptux is going to be opening soon, and um, you know a lot of people have come to our, our old events, the the Pirate Festival and the Strawberry Festival, and and so I just want to talk a little bit about what's coming up for the Bourne Historical Society and focus on some of the things that are new, some of the things that you know that people have never seen before. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, it you know, what's coming up? What's the next thing that that uh, that BHS is up to? Well, other than our lectures. Mm -hmm. um, on the 2nd of April, which is Monday night, uh, we're going to have an open house and uh, tours of the historic. And that's the Happy Birthday building. Born, the Happy, Happy Birthday, Birthday Born, Born event. Born. Yes. <laughs> and um, Born celebrating, well, which is this a special 134 birth? years. 134. <laughs> yeah. That's how long? The town? Yeah. 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 Really? yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we'll Did you think it was longer cake? or shorter? I would have thought it would have been longer. Yeah. Yeah. The, ho the house that we live in, when we tore our bedroom apart, that took the horse hair plaster off, on the wall in back, I gave, we gave it to Paul's grandfather and never got it back, but on the wall, there was a business card for Eldridge Lumber Monument Mass. Oh, wow. So it dated our house yeah. in the 1800s. Yeah. Because, Paul, like Paul said to me, he says, that's, that's before the town was born. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Well, well born has kind of the, the, um, the, the strange coincidence of being in some way the earliest settled area of the Cape yeah. but also the latest town because the first to settlement was the Aptuxet Trading Post in mm -hmm. 1627 Seven. <laughs> yeah. and then um, and that but you know but we really didn't come become a town until it was 1884 so um, so so w what are the activities for the the happy birthday born it's it's a Monday night right okay um, it'll will open about six o'clock six thirty and certainly entertain having guests come in and we'll give some tours and our cast from the past will be there. Oh good, oh that's very nice. Um, yep. There'll be members of the first board of selectmen mm -hmm. who met there in that building. Okay. Uh, and there'll also be Jonathan Bourne and his daughter Emily yep. and Miss, uh, Miss Beth Bourne. Very nice. We'll be there, yes, and, and several other persons. Yep. So it'll be a fun night. And it's it's a beautiful building. I mean, at, you know, I'm, I feel so privileged to be able to spend time there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and sometimes yes. somebody recently at a historic commission meeting, um, it was just a, you know, a, a customer coming in or, you know, a citizen coming in saying, what is this place? Is it a church? Because <laughs> there's that <laughs> the gorgeous stained glass, stained glass window. window and. Um, you know, and it, it's one of those buildings that's such a such a treasure for the town. So that'll be nice just to have a, an open open house for everybody to come yes. come check it out. Yeah, no matter how many times I've ever been over there and been in it, I'm always amazed. There's always something different that I notice. Yeah, yeah, they do. They change it up a lot. And, but I but mean, also it, but there's in the building itself. I know, I know. You know. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, and almost every single thing when you walk in, I, I've noticed the same thing. You walk in and there's like this just big circular thing like a piece of rock <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. to the side yeah. Yeah. but then when you look at it you realize that you know our you know the exhibits people have labeled it it's a it's a grindstone right from Borndale yeah. from Borndale yeah. yeah so yeah there's a lot of really cool stuff I mean you know every time like I say every time you walk in the building there's something new yep that, I, that I've been there before and I said when did that get there and it's, <laughs> it's part of the building yeah yeah you yeah. know I mean and and, and this time of year, or this year, for, for 2018, the big um, new exhibit is the World War I yes. exhibit. So can you tell us a little bit about where that came from? Or Cape Cod and the Great War. Cape Cod and the Great War. And it's presented to the town and, and others um, by the Cape Cod Military mm -hmm. Museum. <laughs> and Cap yes. Captain wanted to chime in on this, and I forgot <laughs> to introduce my co-host, Captain. Um, yeah. And he, he's a fan of that exhibit um, because there are some um, some information about the animals that were helpful in World War One. You know, you th we think about um, assistance dogs and seeing eye dogs as being a modern thing, but really they were part of part of uh, that war effort. And there is a little display that that refers to those. So he wanted to remind me to talk about that. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> and also, Mary Sicchio 
Joe, who's yes. n not here, but is um, is you know a wonderful board member, and um, she's really our main um, archivist at for the Born Historical Society. She's working on an incredible display yes. with the the things that are born specific for World War One. The colors of born, yes. Yep. yep. And um, she's okay. received a wonderful grant for it, uh, and she just is adding to it all the time. Yes. Um, she was telling me about. Um, some of the information that she had just gotten recently about a, bo a bone disease. Oh, or yeah. A bo bone bomb. Yeah, um, yeah. That happened during the war. Yeah. And um, she's going to speak to that at a ham and bean dinner on Saturday night, oh, just great. briefly. But, yeah, um, yeah. She is awesome. She really, really is. She's a great researcher. And and I and I know that she, you know, whenever she. Um, Whenever she knows that we're going to be talking to you know the press or the public, um, she all this year is really looking to reach out to the community to get people who live in Bourne to share their stories. And yes. you know we understand we won't be finding World War One veterans, but people whose fathers, uncles, mothers participated in the war effort. We're really looking for photos and stories and letters. Do you have any? <laughs> My mother was one of the one of those girls. Bang. Not USO. No, she did the. She was a welder. Oh, Rosie oh, the, Rosie the Riveter. Riveter. Really? really? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. And my father served in the war as a medic. Yeah. Do you have any pictures of her no. from that time? No. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was born when she was forty-three, and that was she well after when she was doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did she did you, did she ever share stories? She said she was one of the best welders they had. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's my mother though. That's yeah. It. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that was such a great opportunity for women to... And you can ask Skip. Skip will tell you that most women are better welders than men. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> Paul says that, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's... More Skip is the welder. Detail. More attention to detail. <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah. fine motor skills. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, she, awesome. she worked as a... During the war, she worked as a welder. Yeah. Because she yeah. had six kids at home. Right. So she was happy to get out of the house. And yeah. <laughs> well, she had to get out of the house. Did she had to help keep sure. sanity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, wow! But yeah. Wow! That's awesome. And and just like Mary has done, she's pulled these types of stories from people in the community who really wouldn't have thought about it before yeah. she started this effort. And and the the thing that you mentioned with the the bone bomb, it was you know, World War One really was the start of chemical warfare, um, and um, and people suffered in ways that you know they only they didn't find out till later. And and we but we found out about this connection. Um, and um, and you know the born connection to somebody who who really suffered from this from a donation to the historical society. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a young man came in and gave us a box full of memorabilia from um, Harry Avery, who was a really um, well-known born resident of his time. And um, but he passed away early due to the chemicals that he was exposed to in World War One. Um, he but was also a selectman. He was a selectman. Yep. He was a lieutenant in the state police, and he, you know, he died I think at 50 or 52, and uh, and he was going, you know, he had connections, and you know, was really, mm -hmm. um, you know, the like really politically connected, politically yeah. politically connected, and you know, very important member of our community, um, who we we lost early, but to the credit to this this young man who who brought us um, his letters and writings, his memory will be. Um, preserved at the Born Historical Society, and I know Mary is so excited about um, yes. that gift that she's going to be doing some writing and and and, um, and you know publishing of, of of his items, and you know we never know. I always think that you know in town there might be people who in their attic there's a box or in a drawer an old picture, even an old letter that maybe doesn't mean anything or does mean something that we mm -hmm. could just get a photocopy of to be part yeah. of our collection. Yeah. So, um. And those letters, I have to go back to them, um, that Mr. Avery uh, wrote, they're just beautifully worded and they're so carefully written, not to upset his family, but still to let his family know what he was doing at the time. Um, and to be able to sit and write something like that in all of the confusion of what's happening to you during this time. Is is such a skill. It's incredible. It is. Yeah. It probably was yeah. that that was probably his only downtime that he had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. that would, that gave him to write that stuff down and send it home. Right. That 
took him away from what was going on around him. Right, and gave that connection likely. back to home, to mm -hmm. you know, something yeah. to yeah. keep keep you going, keep yeah. your spirits up. Give you a reason to go on the next day. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then to know, too, that your family, well, he didn't know, but that the family saved those things and considered them to be very precious. Yep. It's, yeah. it's nice. Definitely, definitely. And, and it's yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in itself, it's history. And, and, and it's, we have such a treasure trove of those things. And, and like you said, Whenever you go to that building, there's, it seems like there's something new. It does feel that way every time I'm there. There's like a new treasure that you know you, comes you, to the forefront that we decide that we want to feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not just talking about the treasures. I'm talking about the brick and, brick and mortar of the building itself. Oh, yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, you just walk in, you look around, and this, I don't remember that. <laughs> 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 like when we went over for the Christmas trees, you know, the Christmas tree thing. I was noticing the fireplace, and I looked. Wow, that is so beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's one of those things. Do the do the schools in Bourne bring the kids over there to see it? Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. yeah sometimes groups will come because yep. that's you know those kids are our future. Mm -hmm. Get them interested, and there's our future. Yep. Yeah. The history keeps going through the kids. Yep. We, we, we did have a really nice group of um, high school students who yes. came last year and they, they worked in the archives and they did research projects and really dug into some local history. We'd, we'd love to see more of that. Yeah, to see it, more it of would it. be great, yeah. you know? Yeah. I saw, I, you know, being like in doing quilts, I watched this quilting show and the program is sewing with Nancy and rest her soul. She passed away recently, mm -hmm. but they're still having reruns. And they had this program on just recently and they had an eighth grade group. There was about five or six kids in this eighth grade group. And they made a quilt of valor. They made it. Hmm. They, every Thursday when they go to school, they do some schoolwork and then they go to the library and look up references to stuff that these soldiers did because they had picked certain soldiers they were gonna give it to. Yeah. One of them was one of the girl's grandfather. And they served in World War I or World wow. War II you know, and um, they, they, each kid had a square on the quilt to make. Wow. And they had to find out the history behind the, the quilt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it, they showed the quilt. I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, now that Something like that would be awesome for the kids in to, Wayham to and work Bourne. on. Yeah, yeah. And because it, it'd bring that past to the f current. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned quilts, so I, I just want to oh. talk about what we have right behind us. Is uh, this is a gorgeous quilt, <laughs> and uh, and quilting is such a, a beautiful art, art. And, and, and a way to you know have a permanent memory of something. And you know it's really the the art. If, I'm glad I'm glad you're still quilting and that people are still quilting. <laughs> um, I just started. What can you tell us about this one? <laughs> Diane did the painting. Oh, on, oh. she came to me a oh, while back and asked me if I had any white fabric yep. or muslin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I took her in my stash and I said, pick what you want. <laughs> and I gave her a pile of white fabric and she said, told me what she was going to do. And I said, oh, that sounds cool. I said, if you need a sewing machine or anything, you, you know. Well, I guess they went to a meeting and Priscilla, my girlfriend Priscilla, who's part of the organization, was at the meeting and she's Donna, that sounds like something Donna and I could do. And Diane went out and bought the outside perimeter mm -hmm. and uh, she said brought the next thing I know the, the I got a call from Priscilla telling me that she volunteered us <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have time she said <laughs> so it's up to you Donna and then she get on my case she says now it's got to be done for the pirate fest but well it's got to be done for the supper. dinner yeah right. yeah <laughs> and I said okay so I, she says Next thing I know, Diane shows up with the fabric. So I'm looking at the fabric, and we, we talked about it back and forth. And then the black that's around, the, Priscilla wanted to have the red, yep. the pirate. And I said, no, no, the black. you yep. gotta, you got to highlight those pictures. Yep, yep. Because that's the quilt. Your paintings are the quilt. And, and it's so cute. I mean, each one of these squares is I a little... Them pirate scene. I mean, you know, you've got the, the skull and crossbones, Ahoy matey, the, you know, the adorable parrot. I mean, it's, it's just such a cute little scene. And then you've got the skull and, and crossbone fabric around it. And, um, and so what are we going to do with this quilt? What's happening? <laughs> well, 
as Donna said, she got it made, yep. certainly in a lot of time, um, before our ham and bean soiree, mm -hmm. which is going to be Saturday night, and we're going to sell chances on it. Oh, and awesome. Yeah. With the funds that are raised through those chances, then we're going to put them back towards our mission for the Pirate Festival, and hopefully we'll have a mermaid storyteller come. Oh, wow. So That would be really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kids will love it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We, so this is all in an effort to support the Pirate Festival, right. mm -hmm. and um, which I know is such a popular event, and it's one of the most, you know, the, it's such a fun event. It is it's fun. It's, fun. It. it's one of the most fun to volunteer at, too, because you get to dress up like a pirate, and you play and pretend that you're a kid again. Um, but this mermaid storyteller, this is something new. We haven't had this yes, before. Yes, she approached us, mm -hmm. um, and I've been a little bit in touch with her, and it looks like we will have her come, and she has a tank that she swims in. Oh, wow. Um, she interacts with children. She, that's what she is. She's a children's entertainer. Yeah. She also comes out of that tank, and she'll sit and talk to children. Wow. So I just think it will be a new experience. It'll certainly be an experience that hasn't happened around here before. Yeah, yeah. And it'll uh, help again uh, talk about the history of the pirates, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, so the Pirate Festival is a fun day, but we also try to fit some learning in there, too. Yes, so we do. Having a yeah. storyteller, that's, that's a wonderful time for kids to slow down a little bit mm -hmm. and, yeah. and switch, switch away from their sword fighting and digging for treasure and, and hear a little history. And we will still have the, the buccaneers mm -hmm. from Wareham come over with their ship. So, you know, we'll have some of the old, but we're really trying to bring new, too. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So how could somebody buy a ticket? Are, 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 how much does the ticket cost? A um, dollar for one that's and five dollars for six. Okay. Um, we're going to be all over town. We'll be at town meeting. Okay, um, this town meeting on Monday. Monday yep. night, yep. yep. And then, like I say, at the dinner and at different events, um, at our lectures, but we will be around town and you can get tickets. Okay. So if anybody knows somebody who works for the Historical Society or is on the board, yep. grab them to buy a ticket to, uh, to support and, uh, and, and support specifically this Pirate Festival. Right. All and right. The, the tickets will be drawn at um, 2.30 in the afternoon, the day of the Pirate Festival, May 19th. Okay. You don't have to be present to win it. We'll make sure you get it. But Well, Donna, I, this is it's so she did cute. a wonderful job. You did job. such a beautiful job. Yeah, I, is, but the thing that makes it is her paintings. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, no, you know. it's, but it, it, it's it's so clean. It's so professional. The paintings are just adorable. It's a one of a kind. I mean, honestly, I just you know, there's so many like kids in my life that I can think of that would just love. I that. have a grandson that loves pirates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm buying tickets. Good, so. good, yeah. <laughs> I told my husband, I says, I don't care, I'm buying tickets, that's going to well, Tommy. I mean, for a dollar, for a ticket, you can't yeah. go wrong. Right? It only takes one to win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it goes, to, and the proceeds go to a good cause. Yes, yeah. they do. So. And, you know, we talk about the Bourne Historical Society, and, you know, it, it feels like a, a fixture in town. You almost feel like, hey, that's like a, you know, a town office, but it's a nonprofit organization. It is. And so there's a lot of fundraising. I mean, any, a single dollar that we spend, whether it's on a, you know, phone, Phones or lights or um, you know anything has to be paid for by raising money. Yes, it so, does. So, um, so what what else are you doing for fundraising this year that we could talk about? Um, we're doing an August calendar raffle. Okay. We have um, 31 days of different prizes and monies. Um, yeah, so this calendar raffle, this was new to me. Have you ever I seen I hadn't seen these? it. I've seen those type. Yeah. The Soccer team does it in Wareham. Right, a lot of um, larger organizations, organizations do it because yeah. the key is selling the tickets. Well, and uh, you know, w when you were first talking about it, and it, it took me a while to even just figure out, you know, w what what the concept was. It's so cool <laughs> because yeah. you buy a single ticket, but you get a chance for every day, thirty-one yeah. so, days. And so, it, how much is a ticket? Um, a ticket is five dollars. Five dollars, okay. and we do have a limited number of tickets that we're going to sell. We're not going to. Um, you know, sell an exorbitant um, amount of tickets, so yep. you have a very good opportunity to win if you purchase that ticket. And all of the funds that go from this really do go back to um, the Historical Society mm -hmm. and to our mission. And we, we've got some wonderful people that have donated prizes. Local businesses local have been very businesses, generous. Yep. Yes. Yep. There's cash prizes on here. Um, 
It's just, it's a fun raffle. You have to tell me that top cash prize I found out about it yesterday. $250. That's not bad. No, <laughs> and that'll be on Wednesday the 29th towards the end of the, um, the raffle. Yeah. Yeah, so so p people can buy tickets the same way. They can come to our events to buy tickets. Can they call the office or they can call the okay. office? Okay, good. All of our members will have five tickets that they'll be oh good trying to sell. Okay, so they'll be out there. Yep. Um, and of course, the drawings won't happen until August, and then every day um, we'll draw one winner. Yeah. And again, you don't have to be present to win, and. Um, if you don't live here in town, we'll make certain that you receive your, your yeah. prize. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I really appreciate how um, you, you know, as the, the president and the chair of the fundraising um, committee, you make these fundraisers fun. You know, it's she like, does. you know, it's not like you she have, you works know, hard at I know, it. Oh, well. <laughs> but also like, you know, the chance to win this awesome quilt is so nice and like $250 of cash. That's a pretty, pretty darn good prize. Plus all of the other, you know, 30 prizes on there. So because of our community because we've had members go out and petition them and they've been very helpful yeah yeah well well we definitely um it's it's fun it's fun to be part of it from both the office side and from the customer side because i usually show up to these things as a customer too or a volunteer um, and i have to say that um from the office side I wouldn't be able to accomplish, nor would any of our board be able to accomplish the things that they accomplish if it really wasn't for you, Mavis, being oh. there, <laughs> keeping us together, doing the things that need to be done behind the scenes. Thanks, Diane. Yeah, I appreciate okay. that. Well, what else is new? Tell us what else is going, going on with the Historical Society. We will have a, a golf tournament. Oh, it'll good. It'll be yes. our first one this year, yep. and it'll be at the Brookside Club, and it'll be on I've, I have to. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I've started watching golf. When we when we first started talking <laughs> about the golf tournament, I didn't care about golf, but Tiger Woods is getting me interested in golf again. So, really? Yeah. Now I'm, I think to I'm. To me, that's like watching grass. <laughs> I used to think so, but it's more interesting than you think. It's you know, you, it's uh, it really is kind of fascinating. <laughs> and so. it is serious. Yeah. Like yeah. Donna said, like watching grass grow. But we're going to put some fun into it. Yeah. Members of our cast, you'll be out there golfing with Grover Cleveland, mm -hmm. with Mrs. <laughs> Cleveland. Joseph Jefferson, mm -hmm. Sam Adams. Oh, cool. They'll all be out there on the course golfing with you. It's, it's really going to be a fun event. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as, again, to raise a lot of the funding that we need to operate, you know, during the season. Yeah. So. And that golf tournament, again, it's in September? September 18th. And are you still looking for sponsors for that? I'm looking for sponsors for holes. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking for sponsors for gifts that will be given away, uh, gift bags. Um, we're looking for foursomes. That's the fun part. That is, is the fun is part. Is getting yes. to participate and play. Yeah. Right. yeah. There'll be a wonderful um, dinner after everybody's finished playing and an awards ceremony, and there'll be some nice awards. So it's just going to be a fun event. And where's the where's the tournament taking place? At the Brookside Club. Okay. In Monument Beach. Yep. Um, they have been awesome. Oh, good. And yeah. I knew really nothing about um, operating or running one, and they sat for many hours and taught me what has to be done mm -hmm. and they're they're very helpful and and is that is the dinner going to be at that brookside club that they have yes it oh, is that's beautiful that'll yeah. be very nice um that that's just fun yeah now can can people go just to the they can the go dinner? just to the dinner okay okay um, and all of that information will be out in the community yeah just ask. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. That sounds like a sounds like you have a very busy season coming up, yeah. but you've got something I've else got over there. I've got one more thing I <laughs> want to speak to, and that's um, the Born Historical Society Hero. Um, now you will see through the year um, these signs in people's yards, and these uh, will point out different persons that have been helpful to the historical society. That are uh, behind the scenes that people don't know and with the putting of a sign in a person's yard there will also be a small column in the paper giving acknowledgement to the reason why that sign sits in people's yards mm -hmm. so I'm excited about this that's awesome um, it's going to be fun mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be neat to see the different people that yeah, we choose. Yeah. And do you know how are you going to decide who, who your heroes are? Our board of directors and trustees will um, initially pick out 
the persons. Mm -hmm. And it's not just going to be something that's already happened. It'll be going into the future. And then we'll move forward with making that recognition. Well, it, b having gotten a, a look behind the scenes at Bourne Historical over the last few years, it's amazing how many people just do, you know, I mean, it's Donna, quite, you in the background <laughs> making this quilt for us, you know, I mean, people making centerpieces for the tables for our, our, for dinners. our dinners. Yep. Um, you know, we have so many people just hanging flyers and, um, you know, and helping with the, the non-glamorous parts of the effort, right? <laughs> is it going to be a surprise to the person that the sign oh, shows absolutely. up in front of their house? Yes. Oh, yeah. That will be fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, to me, sounds like that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is such a cool idea. That's, that's a really good one. Canal Side Printing printed these for us um, because they wanted to. Oh, very nice. And they also have done some other printing for us, and they're proud to do it to yes. support our mission. They have been very, very good, they good have. to us. And the quality of their stuff is great. So yes, it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we're a customer, and they also uh, um, help us out every now and yes, then. Yes, they do. Yep, yep. That's wonderful. Well, this sounds like a, an exciting kickoff to, uh, to the 2018 season for the Bourne Historical Society. Um, so we've got the ham and bean supper coming up next. Yeah. Um, then the happy birthday Bourne. Um, what, what, anything else that we want to mention or that, you know, that, that's coming up in the early part of the season? No, I the think... The Strawberry Festival has the cash out. Yes, the Strawberry Festival. The Strawberry Festival, yes. Oh, that's in yes. June. <laughs> yes. That's in June. Yep. And, that, and that's one of our, I mean, people really look forward to that one. And that car show, that uh, that Paul, that your husband yeah. Paul is uh, is organizing for us. That actually has become more and more popular. People really yes, look has. forward, and he has to limit the number of cars, though. Well, so it's a select group. Yeah, they they, they really are gorgeous. The uh, yeah. the cars just add that extra visual, and and um, and I think we're going to be voting for uh, for for best of show this year. Is that yes, yes, yep. yeah. So that'll that'll be an even nice added trophy. Uh, nice trophy. Nice trophy. Cool. Let the audience vote for which uh, which car they think is yep. the most snazzy. <laughs> Yep, and then uh, and then our April Maritime Month is coming you up as well. Yes, and so our lectures every you Wednesday win. in yes. in April we've got a we've got a maritime lecture. Yes, we do. Which uh, Captain will be very excited to greet people. Um, the lectures are his favorite because we often have cheese and crackers at those lectures, <laughs> and a lot of cheese ends up on the floor, but it doesn't stay on the floor for long. <laughs> That's the best part of having a dog. That's right. <laughs> our first Cash lecture fuzzy. will be um, on the fourth. Yes, fourth and of April, it I will think. feature Laura Orleans. Okay, and she is with the New Bedford Heritage Museum. Mm -hmm. So I think that that will. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So that's fun. different than the Whaling Museum. Yes, and it's all about the the, the heritage of the fishing in New Bedford. Oh, fun! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that'll be a really good one. Yes. Good. Good. Well, I'll look forward to. Uh, I'll look forward to that one. <laughs> Well, yes. thank you so much. Captain's given me the signal. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining me, and, and thank you so much for your efforts you. and everything that you do for the Bourne Historical Society and the town of Bourne. I mean, you're such, a, such an important person for our whole town, and thank you. you really make it happen. That means a lot. And, uh, and it's Donna, always been a hard worker. I, isn't she, and she's, you know, she really gets yep. other people to volunteer and to join in. It's uh, such an important thing. So, thank you. And Donna, thank you so much for all the help oh, that you give and welcome. your gorgeous quilt and for Dura. being here. It's because of her. I, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And she thanks. and I go way back. I know. I know. <laughs> so. Well, it is friends that make it happen, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you folks so much for joining us today on A Window to Born, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.